there's one element in photography that is able to breathe life into the photographs. We are talking about depth. In this video, I'm going to show you seven ways how to bring depth into your photographs and also how to let your image look more in a more three-dimensional way. And as this is a landscape photography channel, I will show you examples from landscape photography, obviously, but you can use all these techniques for each genre of photography, even for painting if you want. Hi my friends, very nice to see you. We live in a three-dimensional world obviously and when we take a photograph we do nothing else than just to convert all these elements of our three-dimensional scene into a two-dimensional flat piece of paper like this one here. And the question is now, having this piece of paper in mind, how is it anywhere possible to get the sense of depth into our flat photographs? Well, in our three-dimensional world, the most two powerful things that give us a sense of depth is our stereo depth seeing in the one hand. Yeah, I mean, we have two eyes, we see all the objects already as three-dimensional objects. And in the other hand, there is a time axis in reality. This allows us to move around, to change the perspective when we look at the scene and due to the different speed of movement of all the elements while we are moving, we get a sense of depth in reality. So these two things are the most powerful things that give us a sense of depth in our three-dimensional world. But unfortunately, this is a quite bad news now we are not able to use these two things in photography. Yeah, I mean, we have two eyes, the camera has just one. We can change the perspective in reality, but we can't do this when we look at a photograph. But there's also a good news. There are even seven more methods of how we perceive depth in reality. Seven methods we are all used to already when we look at the scene in reality and we can use them all to emphasize depth in our photographs. A really strong way to get depth in our photograph is by using atmospheric conditions. When we try to translate a three-dimensional scene to two dimensions, we see that the contrast is not equally spread over the scene. Closer elements have more contrast, distance elements have less contrast. So in this image here, for instance, we have a high contrast in the foreground and a low contrast in the distance mountains, which finally leads into a kind of layering effect to the distance we perceive a sense of depth. And same here, high contrast in the foreground, but the more it goes to the distance, the less contrast we get. This is done by particles in the atmosphere. This could be water drops, clouds, mist, fog, haze, even sand. In this case, there was lots of haze in there. But atmospheric conditions can add depth also in a totally different way. So when we have a look at this image here, this is quite interesting. The mist in the mountains emphasize the space between the ridge lines. I mean, look up to the mountain, when there is no mist, we would never believe that there is so much depth up there. It looks more like a flat mountain face. This image here would also look totally flat if we would not have mist in the scene. It is the way of how the mist interacts with the trees back there. It shows us the space between and it leads into a nice sense of depth. So atmospheric conditions can create a really fantastic feeling of depth in our photographs. Landscape photography, tip number two and three go hand in hand. They are related to each other. So let me combine these two tips here. Well, we are humans. We are masters in interpreting depth and we are also really clever. We know that the closer an object is, the bigger it looks and the more the same object goes into the distance, the smaller it looks. So using size is a really good idea to bring depth into your photographs. This is tip number two, size. We know that when we look at this image here, the mountain in the distance is much bigger than the rock in the foreground. But when we look at it on a two-dimensional photograph, the rock takes even more space in the image than the much bigger mountain does. But as we know from our experience of living in a three-dimensional world, we know that the mountain back there must be far away. 
Finally, we get an amazing sense of depth in this photograph, just by getting close to a foreground element. Same here, we have all these octopuses out of roots, obviously. The closer they are in the composition, the bigger they look. It is also the size that gives us the sense of depth here. But also repeating patterns work quite well here, and this is tip number three, repeating patterns. And as already mentioned, it goes hand in hand with size. So when we look at this image here, we see these bushes of grass in the close foreground and they repeat back there to the lake and get smaller and smaller, what tells us that there must be depth. Repeating elements to the distance are generally a really fantastic method to bring depth into your photographs. So when we look here, we see this big illuminated tree here in the foreground. They get a bit smaller back there, more smaller on that hill in that midground. And in the distance, we just see the dark green colors of the trees. And also when we can't determine them over their shape anymore, because they are too far away in the very distance, the similar color tells us these are trees like in the foreground and in the midground. And this leads into an amazing sense of depth. This image here is also quite interesting. We also have atmospheric conditions here which support a sense of depth, but these big trees here in the foreground, which are repeated in the distance, tell us that this hill back there must be further away. So always try to use size or repeating patterns in your composition to your advantage to create a sense of depth. And by the way, a good bonus tip here is go very close to your foreground elements. The closer your camera position is to the foreground and the further away the distance is, the more feeling of depth you get in your photograph. And you can even boost this effect more with using an ultra wide angle lens. I'm sure you have already heard from the leading lines. You know, these lines would bring the viewers into the scene and they are quite important for composition. But have you ever considered vanishing lines in your composition? Well, vanishing lines are lines that bring the viewer's eyes at least a bit closer to the vanishing point. In our three-dimensional world, we have one vanishing point. And what I do is I try to consider a vanishing point and to use vanishing lines to lead back closer to the vanishing point. Leading lines could be vanishing lines actually, but not all leading lines are automatically vanishing lines. In fact, it depends on if they lead to the vanishing point, if they lead to the distance. This image here is a quite good example. The characteristic lines of this canyon lead back to the vanishing point, to this nice waterfall. A simple composition, but a really powerful three-dimensional look, just given by using vanishing lines. Vanishing lines are also very important in this composition here. As we don't have a close foreground, we can't use size or patterns for creating depth. We can't go close with our camera position, or it doesn't really make sense here in this scene. But all these lines here, leading us back through the vanishing point, give us an amazing sense of depth here. We have also atmospheric conditions up there, which adds even more depth. But without vanishing points, it would look even quite flat and boring. Same here, we don't have elements we could compare to each other. We can't use size for creating depth. This is totally done by vanishing lines. And here an image which combines even more methods. We have the vanishing lines leading us back to the vanishing points. We have a bit of mist back there, what leads into a nice layering effect. And as I was quite close to these rocks here at the left, I also used the effect of size, the comparison of the big rocks with the powerful waterfall. But in this case, the vanishing lines have the even strongest impact to the sense of depth. My friends, just for the case that you like this video, I'd be really happy if you could give me a thumb up. It is just one gig for you, but it could really help me to get this video better ranked on YouTube. So thank you therefore. contrast already according to atmospheric conditions, but we can use the power of contrast in an additional way to even emphasize depth in our photographs, because contrast itself creates depth. So when we look at this image here, this hill here at the right hand side was already in the shadow. The light came softly through these clouds in the distance, and as we know due to this contrast, the landscape back there must be more in the distance than the darker layer in the foreground. We get a sense of depth here in the scene. So a contrast between shadow and light can really help to get depth in your photographs. Same here in this image, the mountain back there was illuminated by the sun, but the rocks here in the foreground was in the shadow, what leads into a fantastic feeling of depth. And what I tend to do is, what painters do by the way, I play with colors. Just quick, there will come a known video about colors. You know the light is scattered due to our atmosphere. 
the angle of how the light hits the atmosphere is the reason why the color temperature changes so much during the day. So when the light hits the atmosphere, it is scattered in different colors. And blue, what has a quite low frequency, is scattered to all directions. And this is important because this means we always get blues in the shadows. This really helps us because we can use this knowledge to emphasize the appearance of shadow in our post-processing without making it darker. Making shadows a tiny bit more blue emphasizes the shadow and we can also color contrast in this case what leads into more into a sense of depth. That's important also to think about color contrast, not only luminances. But there is even more to know and this is a pro tip now. Warmer elements look closer, colder elements look further away. And to be honest, I did really hard to get this one to work in landscape photography. Because in a wider scene, I usually want to have my subject in the distance to be bright and warm, because this is where the flow of the composition should finally go. And I want my foreground rather to be a bit more dark, to be more in the shadow, just to support the flow back to the subject. But shadows contain more cold tones in nature, bright elements contain more warm tones. So the opposite of that what I want. And this is why I struggled really long to get warmer elements to look closer because I wanted them to have in the distance. But finally I found an aware solution and this is quite powerful. This is a pro tip my friends. So when we look at this image here for instance, there was a thunderstorm rolling in, the clouds in the foreground were illuminated by warm sunlight, the distance was already in the shadow. In both processing I emphasized the warm and the cold tones to emphasize the sense of depth. If everything were cold and blue, this image would look flat and boring. But with the color contrast, we understand that there is a space in, into the distance. And this image here is one that I'm really, really happy about. I got the midground illuminated, what builds an amazing contrast to the distance as well as to the foreground. But the thing what makes the depth here in this scene is the subtle light in the grasses on the close foreground. Remember, warm elements look closer, cold elements look further away. And this is exactly what we have in this image. Also here I used warm cold contrast in post-processing to emphasize this effect to get more sense of depth in this photograph. But we also have vanishing lines in this one and I used the repetition of elements and the size what made the depth right powerful here. This one here is totally different. We don't have a closer foreground, there is no clear repetition, we have a little bit of size differences here but just rudimentary and there is also just a little bit of mist in front of the rock but without interaction to other elements in the, in the scene who doesn't add depth here. So in this scene here, contrasting color is the one and only thing that finally leads into depth. I mean the depth is not outstanding here but with that contrast it were totally flat and far away from a good image. Another really important element that adds depth in our scene and what even leads into a three dimensional look is done by the direction of the light. And yeah, we get contrast when we get an interaction of shadows and light and we talked already about how to use this to your advantage. But when soft light comes from the side, we get plasticity for the illuminated element. So when we look at this image here for instance, this hill up there is illuminated from the right. This leads into a more three-dimensional look because our brain knows as there comes light from the side and as we see all the textures up there, there must be depth. I mean, if there were no depth, there were no light be caught up there. So this is a really strong way to get more depth, to get more plasticity to your photographs. Without this light spot up there, the scene would look totally flat and boring. This little bit of light lead into depth and into a photograph I'm really happy about. Another photograph I'm quite happy about is this one here. Also here we have a nice side light from the left in this case. We have shadow in the foreground and light at the vanishing point what leads already into a feeling of depth. But when we look at these greens up there, the grass is growing at the peak. It has different shades of green, different tones and this is given by the way of how the light hits the grasses. It is given by the direction of the light. This adds plasticity to the scene, it looks more three-dimensional, it looks more like you could walk into the scene. We get depth in our composition. A quite strong method of getting depth in our photograph is isolation. 
And I mentioned this already in my video about composition, a quite useful video about the most powerful methods in composition, by the way. So if you haven't seen it, I will link it up there for you. And the idea of isolation is to get elements isolated from each other, to simplify the scene, to get rid of distractions and so on. But we can use this also to show the space between closer elements and that they are further away. There are different ways of how to get isolation between elements and I mentioned one of them already in the beginning of this video, it is done by atmospheric conditions. In this image here for instance, we get more sense of depth through the mist in the background. I was also close to these ferns here, what leads into a fantastic sense of depth, but without the mist back there, there were no feeling of depth from the midground to the background. So the mist was really important here, but we don't need 100% of clear isolated elements therefore. So when we look at this image here for instance, it was a foggy morning, so the further an object was away, the more it was in the fog. Our subject, that tree bit there, is already slightly in the fog, more than the foreground. You remember what I said about contrast, but the background behind the tree is even more in the fog, what tells us that there must be space between the tree and the background, and this ends up in a feeling of depth. But atmospheric conditions are not the only way of how to get that through isolation. Also a contrast between sharpness and blurriness can fantastically add depth. In this case I took a portrait shot of this flower with my macro lens. Due to the shallow depth of field, what we get when we open the aperture by the way, I got just the center of the flower sharp, the distance got totally blurry. To do that blurry background, the bokeh obviously, the flower gets totally isolated, we get depth in this photograph. Yeah, finally we have just two layers here, the flower and the background. And here one more flower image, I photographed it from the pop downwards to the flower, the flower is sharp, the further away the elements are, the more they get blurry. In fact, we can just determine the flower and some leaves maybe, just the elements that add to the story here. So it's well isolated and we get a sense of depth, although I photographed it quite in a 90 degree angle from the top, so yeah, also in this case we get a fantastic feeling of depth. I also show this image here again of the point of view of isolation. All these rocks, all these ridge lines are well isolated from each other. Up there we have one more tiny bite of the mountain. Our brain is clever and knows that behind that mist must be more of the mountain. And this is the reason why we get a feeling of depth when we look at this photograph. On my experience a sense of depth can make a really big difference to a photograph. In many cases it is even an essential part of my composition. So always think about depth when you are building up a composition. My friends, I hope this video was useful for you. I hope you enjoyed it. If yes, give me a thumb up and don't forget about your friends. Share this video on our social platforms. Give your friends also the chance to improve their skills in composition. I thank you so much for watching. See you next Saturday. Bye. I'm the landscape you need to see. You are the artist I'll never be. Stay with me and I have no doubt. You'll make a painting that makes you proud.